to the second session of verbal where we're going to take a look at the very next passage on the SAT March 2020 test. This is the second passage on the test. The same rule applies. You could go for any reading strategy that speaks to you. I'm going to move directly to the questions where I find the very first, uh, you know, the first few questions are general questions, not line reference ones, but question number 14 is a vocab in context question. So we can directly move to line 20 looking for the word interest. For those of you who have read the passage, you could just read this line. For the ones who haven't, reading three lines above and three lines below will give you a better understanding. And of particular interest here, these seemingly irrelevant features often involve space. Okay, so of particular focus here. That's what my prediction is. Looking at the answers, uh, focus does not match sympathy. Importance we could hold on to. Responsibility, attention, out of scope. Importance is my answer. So vocab in context question hardly takes, you know, a few seconds or minutes. So we can quickly move on to the next question. Another line reference question, line 21 to 52. What are we looking for when the author refers to certain studies as classic? She most nearly means that the studies are, okay, what does the author mean by the usage of the word classic about studies? 21 to 52. All right. So let's look at these lines again for the ones who have read this passage once. You could read really fast. You could skim if required for the ones who have not. Go slow. In one classic study, Mike Tucker and Rob Ellis at the University of Plymouth are subjects to judge whether items were upside down or right side up. The stimuli consisted of photographs of common household objects like frying pans or spatulas. Subjects were to indicate their choice by pressing a designated button, one button for upright and the other for upside down. One button was placed near the subject's left hand and the other near the right hand, a detail we wouldn't normally consider to be important, but that was essential for what Tucker and Ellis were really getting at. Secretly, Tucker and Ellis were not particularly interested in the upright or inverted choices, but whether the subjects would respond faster when they had to press the button with the hand on the same side as the, as the handle of the object in the photograph. All the objects had handles and were photographed in multiple orientations, upright with the handle on either the left or right, and inverted with the handle on either the left or right. Tucker and Ellis found that when the handle on the frying pan was on the left, Responses involving the left hand were indeed faster than those involving the right. Subjects also made fewer errors when the correct uh, when the correct choice involved a match between the hand and the handle. When the objects were mirror reversed, the response pattern reversed as well, indicating that it was not a simple sorry it was not simply a matter of being faster or more accurate with one hand than the other. All right, so what would the word classic mean here in reference to this particular study see this is quite a long window so do not lose sight of what the question is the question is simply asking about you know the interrelation of the word classic with study in the author's pov or point of view mentioning a study calling it classic obviously means that it's a standing or accepted practice simple and understated in design design is really not in question here antiquated if it were it wouldn't be mentioned frequently performed we really do not know the frequency of the performance long established well regard yes because it's an accepted experiment by all means and with that we're going to move on looking for the next line reference question um, Okay, we do not have any more line reference questions. So, if you remember, the first passage had quite a few line reference questions. It was considerably easier than this one. Uh, so, we can directly move on to the best evidence question, which is 16 and 17. So, based on the passage, which statement, uh, sorry, um, it's a paired question. It's a specific paired question, which we're going to move on to. 
So based on the passage, which statement regarding the subjects in Tucker and Ellis's experiment can most reasonably be inferred? So it's an inference question. What are you inferring? What are you inferring? You're inferring which statement regarding the subjects in the experiment. Okay, so you want to know what the subjects are thinking. Let's move back to lines 21 to 24 again for the ones who have read the passage already just reading these lines would suffice for the rest of you you've got to read at least five lines above and five lines below here so in one classic study mike tucker and rob ellis at the university of plymouth asked subjects to judge whether items were upside down or right side up all right that's all the information that you have here which really doesn't match any of the given answer choices so we can move on to 24 to 26. Okay. Stimuli consisted of photographs of common household objects like frying pans or spatulas. Frequently used utensils seen in the photograph. <laughs> Look, this is again, you know, it's a trap. Frequently used utensils seen in the photographs that a lot of students would be inclined to choose because again, you do not really know about the frequency. This is a guess. So I can safely eliminate it. Uh, moving on. Oh, we have to read 26 to 28 now. 26 to 28. Subjects were to indicate their choice by pressing a designated button, one button for upright and the other for upside down. Okay. Again, does not really match any of the answer choices. Then we are left with 34 to 38. Let's read it because it's completely possible that we have really eliminated the credited response. So never choose an answer because all of the others are incorrect without reading it first. Secretly, Tucker and Ellis are not particularly interested in the upright or inverted choices, but whether the subjects would respond faster when they had to press the button with the hand on the same side as the hand of the object in the photograph. Okay, so that was their secret mission. If that were the case, unusually developed, nothing about that, carefully selected based, nothing about background either, unaware of the true focus, yes, because it was a secret mission. Therefore, my answers are A and D. Okay. And then we're going to move on to our next pair, which is 18 and 19. Based on the passage, could the likelihood that most participants in Tucker and Ellis' study write with their right hands be used as an effective challenge to their conclusions? Okay, this is a yes and no question. It could easily be, uh, you know, if you're really focused, you should be able to answer whether it's a yes or no. This is a general paired question. You could call it, um, see most okay all right looking at our next paired question we have 18 and 19 again 18 says based on the passage could the likelihood that most participants in tucker analysis study right with their right hands be used as an effective challenge to the conclusions okay now see although this is a paired question you can really answer 18 without 19 here because we've already read that bit where it's clearly mentioned that it really did not matter whether it was the left hand or the right. When the objects were mirror reversed, response pattern reversed as well. So it was about, uh, and that was not simply a matter of being faster or more accurate with one hand or the other. So the answer is definitely no. So we can eliminate A and B directly. See, that's how you can move quickly through the question. C says no because the researcher's study design had successfully ruled out the possibility that being right-handed would be a factor in the results. Okay. 
and D says no because the researchers switched the photographs shown based on whether participants were right or left handed. We read that bit, we know this never happened, the answer is definitely C and now because I know the answer is C, I have to match it with the correct lines. So looking at question 19, what were these lines? It was around 40. Six, seven ish. So, do we have that as an answer choice? Okay, we do. So, this is how you can answer your, you know, general paired questions whereby you can save a ton of time by answering the question first and just then choosing the lines that have the answer. And then we'll move on to our table questions or synthesis question where we are synthesizing the passage and the table to be able to answer these questions based on the table which statement best represents the findings about the mean response time so let's quickly look at the table it's a good idea to read the title of the table first moving on to the headers and the units of measurement so we can see left left hand is 628.2 milliseconds right right hand 627.3 and we know that when the object and the response hand are the same time is supposed to be the least that we've already read and we can see that time is in fact more when the hand and the response hand are different that means the object handle and the response hand are different okay so we can now move on to the answer choices subjects responded slowest when presented with objects with handles on the left for both that is not true because it's the same for both responded slowest when presented with objects with handles on the right for again that's not true subjects responded fastest when presented with objects with handles on the opposite side on the opposite side so we know that is definitely not true because the answer is on the you know same side that should be there subjects responded fastest when presented with objects with handles on the same side yes as their response hand for both the object handle orientation so d is my answer moving on to 21 based on the passage how would an advocate of the theory of embodied cognition most likely explain explain the results presented in the table we can use scanning here you have to scan for the word embodied cognition which is right here theory that thought might involve stimulating the activity patterns in our sensory and motor areas of the brain is called grounded or embodied cognition okay again for the ones who have not read the passage you've got to read that bit when the response uh, hand is on the same side as the object handle the objects in the photographs are easier to recognize um how do we even know this not given when the response hand is on the same side as the object handle, sensory areas activate more slowly and deliberately. This is the exact opposite of what has been given. Response hand is on the side that is opposite the object handle. The brain must take longer. Yes, the brain does take longer. Could be an answer. Side that is opposite the object handle. The brain is able to picture more sharply the object that is to be crossed. This is again exact opposite information so that's a reversal therefore my answer is C and with that we're going to move back to the questions that we haven't yet answered number 11 which choice best represents the overall structure of the passage theory is introduced potential criticism of that theory is considered okay I'm going to do this again Looking at question number 11 now, which choice best represents the overall structure? So it's a structure based question. Hypothesis is put forth. Not sure we saw a hypothesis. Experiment testing that hypothesis is outlined. We haven't really tested that hypothesis. We've simply outlined it. Findings of that experiment is offered. Um, does not look like a viable answer. Theory is described. Studies exploring the theory are recounted. Theories have been recounted. That means they've simply been, you know, recalled. Significance of the results. 
the significance of those studies suggested suggested it's a good enough you know SAT word not strong at all not extreme that means generalization not really examples contrasted examples have not been contrasted theory introduced good potential criticism criticism was not even present B is my answer uh, you know in this particular question you may have been confused between A and B you have to understand that hypothesis was really never put forth so that was your word to watch out for moving on to 12 based on the passage how would the author most likely respond to another scientist's claim okay um, that the theory of embodied cognition cannot account for thoughts regarding abstract concepts such as peace and honesty again you've got to read that bit about embodied cognition if you haven't already this entire bit is simply an implication implemented at least in part perhaps thinking also involves activating the subset might be implemented by partially activating the visual tactile so these are your sensory responses thought might involve stimulating the activity patterns in our sensory and motor okay so that's what that bit says arguing that the scientists arguing is a is an extreme word not fully considered the mechanism that is not the answer asserting extreme word again that thoughts about abstract concepts are less common this comparison is not given suggesting that the theory should be tested under different okay this suggestion was conceding that the theory of embodied cognition may not account for all aspects of thought may not looks like a good enough answer taken just how many times they have really you know used words like in part and perhaps and might be so we found our answer for 12 moving on to 13 according to the passage embodied cognition is the theory that thought emerges from reactions to certain powerful events um, okay this really we do not know about the reaction bit can be used to improve various physiological never mentioned may not involve activation of signals sorry may involve right could be the answer demands conscious mental effort we don't know so C is our answer so uh, you know for the ones who have uh, watch the previous video as well as this one you'd understand how the previous passage was definitely simpler than this one so it is expected that you'd be taking less time there so you can you know make up with the extra time that you're taking to answer these questions accurately because again like we mentioned already pacing means speed is not enough if your accuracy level is also not good enough do like, share and subscribe to our page so we could keep making more videos to help you ace the SAT. Have a great day.